how's it going guys welcome back to another video so in this video we're gonna be reviewing the zoom h5 handy recorder now the zoom h5 was released after the zoom h6 which was their first uh, flagship recorder with the new preamps that they built from the ground up now a lot of people didn't really need so much xlr inputs and everything like that and the zoom h6 was quite a big unit you know you couldn't really put it in your pocket and even if you did you had to worry about the gain obviously because they didn't have any metal bar like this one around it to um, stop anything messing with them when they're in your pocket and so they came out with the zoom h5 which is this recorder over here and uh, a lot of people didn't like the fact that I think Zoom was promoting this H5 recorder as the successor to the H4n. Now, the problem with that is it was missing all the special effects that you could use with your um, instrument, and a lot of people didn't like that. And so, it's kind of a mixed breed of both, but it's missing the special effects. It does have obviously two XLR inputs and it's much smaller than the Zoom H6 so this is a good recorder but the thing is it wasn't the H4n so they came out with the H4n Pro and now they're saying that that's the successor of the H4n and it has the same preamps as the Zoom H6 and also the Zoom H5 so it's got much better noise level and everything um, so that's all go good so if you're thinking about getting this expecting a special effects and all the mixing stuff then this is not it that would be the h4n pro um, this is for everything else basically as a generic recorder you can record vocals and stuff with this and this works really well for that and the difference is this has gain knobs instead of buttons for adjusting the gain so i that's that's good but if you put this on hold these gain knobs still actually change the um the gain so you can't put them on hold unfortunately so let's start off by taking a look around this recorder so the front here you've got um, a mic capsule which you can take off and on and it comes with different different ones that you can purchase to put on here and so there's the mid side microphone and there's then there's the shotgun one as well they've come out with quite a few others and they are really really tough it's a really good mechanism is this so I, I really really like it and then you also have the screen which is the same as all the other recorders i guess other than zoom h6 um because this is the one the older one i'll just turn it on and I'll show you it um and this is good for when you're outside you can actually say this like it's next to nothing like it's really really good so you're going to use the screen for monitoring and also to check your sd card time left and the battery life and everything so that all happens on the screen and below the screen there you've got two gain knobs for the left and the right channel and those are the xlr inputs at the bottom and below that you have the activator switches we'll get on to get on to later on in the video you've also got the playback buttons now these are actually clicky and everything so they're really really good the record button is a bit mushy uh, rather than being a bit clicky so that's a bit different i didn't expect it to be mushy but whatever it's fine it works for me now on the right side you have the SD card slot over here and I believe it goes up to 32 gigabytes so micro SDHC cards and you've also got the menu button which acts as a back button sometimes uh, I think it is the back button and then you've got this um, joystick kind of function over here which you push up and down to go up and down in the menus and you press in to act as an enter and then you've got the remote switch um, the remote plugin over here so you can trigger the recording and everything without having to touch the recorder so that's all good and a lot of people don't like this joystick but, uh, and uh, you can find this on the zoom h2n as well but i personally i actually like it it works really well for me and you will find that in this recorder there is no line in as in you can't use microphones that's on the capsule over there and this capsule comes with the recorder don't worry but that's the only one that comes with it so if you're planning on getting a mid-side microphone capsule or the shotgun microphone capsule then this doesn't have that um, you have to buy that separate now on the left side you've got the line out so and you also got the headphone now so these are two separate now and um, the line out is basically for a proper line signal that you can just hook into your camera that you're recording with and then you can have both of the audio also from the zoom h5 preamps and also from the camera so you don't have to sync it up uh, sometimes but i do still recommend you doing that and you also got the headphones you can you can monitor um, audio in real time and you got the volume up and down for the headphones now you got the uh, usb in and this can be used as uh, 
not only to power the unit so you can power this without having to use the batteries and you can also use this to plug into your pc and act as a sd card reader or as a interface so you can plug microphones into this and they'll pop up as in your um, door software and stuff like that and that'll work really well you can also use this as a sd card reader and also I think you can use this as a digital to analog converter, so you can use this as a DAC. Um, so that's cool. And you also got a two-way switch, which is the turn off, turn on and off button, the power button, and the hold switch. So you just push it up, and it's going on hold, and then you just push it down for the one or two seconds, and this uh, turned on and off. Uh, now at the back, you got the uh, tripod mount, so just like on your cameras, you can mount this on a tripod and point out something. So that's really good. And you've got the hatch for the two AA batteries. Now I'm using um, rechargeables, and if you're gonna use uh, lithium ion batteries and NiMH batteries, then uh, which are rechargeable basically, uh, they're a bit like lithium ion. Um, then you're gonna want to change the settings in the um, menus to support those because then they'll make sure the battery readout is proper and working properly um, and also the same for alkaline batteries so you have to change in the menus you've also got your hook um, hatch over here or a little cap for your lanyard if you want to use that um, another problem you've got the input one and input two and this is basically a combo jack for not only trs but also xlr so you can use two xlr microphones and these are the game knobs for those so that's really good now uh, in terms of build quality this is a solid device this is like top end high end really proper made stuff um, so obviously japan is a really good place to get manufactured products a lot of things come out of japan that are really cheaply built and everything but this is one of those items from japan that makes japan shine this is a really tough built device and at the back it has a rubber fee um, and you can actually put this down and it, it won't really move it's really well i didn't i thought they would be at the bottom because using the zoom h2n they are at the bottom but they're not they're actually on the back and that is really good oh and they also have a speaker at the back so you can monitor without having to use headphones and you can also use this as a usb speaker if you want so it works like that as well turn it with the zoom h2 and it'll work on this as well it'll also work on the mac os i believe so that so you don't have a problem with that and let's go ahead and switch it on hold this down and it comes on i've updated it to the latest firmware i believe and what i'm going to do is just zoom in here and we'll go through the menus now you use this to go up and down and then you press the menu button to go back um, so that's the operation over here okay so this is your main screen and it'll basically show you your levels your level meters and which format you're recording in and if you are, if you enable any special things like phantom power and it'll show you the, the file name that you're recording to how much time left or how much time you've been recording you can change that in the menus and the capsule so i'm using the xy5 which is the one that comes with the zoom h5 and there's obviously your battery level now you can press the menu button and it'll jump into the menus so you got project and folder so i haven't really gone into project but basically this selects the um, folder that you're going to be recording into and we'll get onto this later on because there is something i want to talk about that and then from the project folder there's another set of folders and that's the folder that you're going to be recording into and so i've got files that have been recorded and they're into different different folders and they can get a bit annoying we'll get onto it later on so the first thing is in as ins and outs so these are basically your inputs and outputs and limiters and compressors so you've got your limiters here and you have to choose the input uh, let's go on all and it will activate them so they'll they lit up now and you can actually change the limiters and compressor you can apply those but we're going to keep them off uh, i don't really mess around with any of this and you can also obviously do that and um, it will have turned on the lights and um, you can go ahead and apply a local filter so that's good and let's go back so next you have the ins and outs for input one and two and you can enable phantom power over here on all of them um, and i actually want to enable i've only got to enable on the first one second one is off and that's because i can use a dynamic microphone on the second one and uh, a condenser microphone on the, on the first input so that's really good and you can also change the voltage and you have three um, so um, a lot of touch cam recorders i think are missing 24 which isn't all that useful at times but it, you know it's there so it's really nice you can change the voltage over here 
and you also got the plugin power which I've got on and that's basically for the line in or microphones in and uh, you can record lapel mics and everything so that works really nice with that uh, you also got the um, minus 20 decibels gain part and this is if the signal is too loud you can uh, input those and now on the hit six they actually have physical buttons or switches which you can just switch and they'll turn the on in here you have to jump into the menus um, and I've got these off so you can just reduce the gain by 20 decibels and you've also got the um, mid side matrix which will allow you to change the mic capsule set, um, settings for um, the mid side capsule which I don't have and you've got the monitor for that you've got the mixer which I don't know anything about really I'm sorry and you've got the line out levels which is for the line out in here and if it's too quiet then you can just increase that let's go ahead and uh, drop it down to minus 30 so it goes down to 30 oh you can only drop it down I guess um, that's fine so let's go back out of this and then you've got record now you can change the formats all the way up to 96 kilohertz 24 bit if you're recording in stereo mode which I'll jump into in a bit and you can also record into mp3 which is all the way up to 320 kilobytes a second and if you're recording multi-track mode which is what I'm on right now recording a maximum up to 48 kilohertz 24 bit for each channel separately and you've got the auto record which will um, start recording automatically you've got the pre-record which is about two seconds or something of recording already into the files and uh, you got the uh, left and right buckle which is about uh, which is the same file as the um, main recording that you're recording on but it's minus 12 decibels lower so uh, in case you peak then you can go to that file and you can change the product name and then you got the counter setup and this is basically the recording time that is showing you I've got it to count down that's because I like to know how much time there's left of recording and you've also got the sound marker which I don't know anything about honestly I don't know a lot of these things and you can obviously monitor your um, recordings by going to that and you got your tools and you got your metronome and tuner and there is not much in here compared to the um, zoom h4n pro so definitely not going to go into that but that's, that's for music um, use you got your system and you can change the day and time the backlight and the uh, contrast as well i'll go ahead and change that now so you can make it darker and more fuzzy i keep you on five because that's what it came with and you got your battery type so you can change that if you're using different battery and obviously the firmware version i updated to 2.01 and you go reset and um that's pretty much it really you can obviously do other things and you can act as an audio interface so usb so here is the record mode and i think this is the last one yes so if you jump into stereo mode uh, it's basically going to record only one file and so if you're um, using gain one gain two and everything and uh, all these gains i mean inputs it's all going to go into one file so you can't like change the inputs and out and the volumes on gain uh, different different microphones later on but if you're going to record you can record up to 96 kilohertz 24 way so that's a good thing if you want more than 48 kilohertz which is what i recommend typically for vocals and voiceovers we can go up to a 96 kilohertz if you're recording instruments and the thing with um, this is you can't really go back out of it unless you press the menu button twice on like the zoom h2 and you just hold it and it goes back to the home um, but the problem with this is the line um, input 1 and 2 are joined up to 1 so if you want to activate 1 you're gonna have to activate both of them and um, this is just like that with all the other mods and here's the good thing about this now it records if you're recording in multi-track mode it records each of these channels separate but they're mono both of them are mono so if you're recording into this you're gonna make it into one file which you can also do in multi-track mode what you can do in this way is um, you can record a microphone in stereo an xlr microphone that is um so that is really really cool um i haven't got any microphone uh, to test out that is in stereo um but basically you need some kind of a cable that will turn the left and the right channel into two separate xlr cables 
or inputs and you can input those two into here and it will be stereo now if you monitor the this audio with the headphone with only one microphone plugged in it'll only come out in the left speaker whereas the mic input 2 is only going to be on the right speaker so there's something to consider and i normally don't really use the stereo mode because there's not really a point i go into multi-track mode which will have the channels separate these ones and two separate and also these and what you can do in this mode is as you can see this is going to record three files the left and the right the input one and then input two and uh, but if i hold these two i believe press them together and it's going to join the into one file and it's basically the same as stereo mode now except it is recording a separate file so you have the capsule separate and then you have the xlr cables input separate and so this and this is the same as with in stereo mode if you activate in now um it's gonna activate both of the channels and um i can take that off and if you listen to it and while it's in this view um, it's only going to come out in the left channel if you're using only one microphone um, so that is really really cool i really like that you can make a mono and record microphone into stereo as in if it's a stereo microphone and it's only recording mono because it records only mono you can make that into stereo recording so that's good and in multi-track mode all the recordings will be separate so you have right now i'm going to record three files so left and right will be separate on its own and then track one and then track two will be the mic inputs and in stereo in this mode you can actually get the capsule uh, that has the xlr input and you can record four separate microphones individually so that's what they call this a four track recorder now let's talk about um, the operation now you can actually play back these files that you've recorded by pressing the play button oh no project found apparently so you have to select it from here i'm going to go into seven and i think no, that's empty as well so project is the file that you've recorded and i'll select seven right now if i go back to the uh, menu so it's selected the zoom one from folder seven it's really confusing you can press it and you can play the back and should come out of the speaker And you can change the volume of it and um, yeah that's fine and obviously these light up green so that's good but i'm going to stop that and you can fast forward as well if you're wondering so i can hold that and it's going to start fast forwarding time over there now if you've got a channel activated like this one uh, i'll go ahead and increase the gain and these red lights over here if you peek they will start blinking so they let you know that you're peeking and um, also these two boxes or markers at the end of that they will they will get filled in so they'll tell you that you've peaked on this recording i'll just go ahead and turn them off and i'm gonna plug in a microphone and i want to talk about battery life later on so this is where it gets fun so um i'll have to get the microphone in here i have a condenser microphone which i use with my recordings and i'm just gonna go ahead and plug that in here right now and you can use phantom power from the batteries of this recorder but i'll bring the microphone in up to my face and my mouth legendary mouth and we can start talking now i am going to be talking really closely to the microphone um, but you can talk just the way you use a normal microphone and what i'm gonna do is as you can see the battery is low and i talk about battery life in a bit uh, i'm gonna have to stop the zoom h2n2 from recording and we'll switch on to this but i'm gonna power this with the um, usb cable so you're gonna hear the silence now i'm gonna turn the recording off
so it seems like I'm getting a good signal there I can go ahead and plug this in and the battery icon is going to disappear okay so now I'm recording with the zoom h5 and you can see it right down here just out of the shot and I'm gonna talk about a few things while I'm recording the audio with the zoom h5 and a lot of this has to do with all the other reviews that I've seen on this recorder and honestly I'll just say out straight it's not what they say everybody reviewing this zoom h5 they're saying it's really great for the price and everything but just hear me out I don't have an opinion on it this is just proper technical specs and just the way it is and I will be testing other microphones with it now I did make a jump cut because the camera ran out of battery apparently and I'll be testing a few microphones I only have one XLR microphone unfortunately right now and also right now I am running on battery power and um, I'll also talk about battery life right now but first off let's go ahead and do the audio recording um, so what, what you're hearing right now is the zoom h5's capsule that it comes with and <clears throat> I have had to crank the gain up to get a usable signal and it's about 8.3 83% gain and it's really noisy now this is raw audio I'm not gonna edit this I'm recording in the XLR input as well as the left and the right channels and so I'm gonna plug the microphone in later on but I'm not gonna stop the recording hopefully that works out well so this is what it sounds like with the XY capsule that it comes with it and you can also monitor the um, recording proper as well now I have this microphone now this is a lapel mic and it's a really cheap microphone um, if you're into audio then I do recommend you picking up this microphone because um, we'll talk about this microphone now um, and we'll get the XLR microphone plugged in here and I'll just do a professional audio recording and we'll talk about the other things so I'm gonna plug it into the mic capsule right now and I've done a separate review on this mic capsule so you can go check it out I'm not gonna like speak into this a lot all right so now it's only on the um, so now is speaking only well I am now speaking only in um, the left channel and that's because this is a mono microphone now crank the gain down I mean load it down and I'm gonna make this a mono recording so you can hear me right in the middle so this is the mic uh, mic j044 and I don't know uh, what company is I think it's Mike J is the company but this is a mono microphone and it's a really cheap lapel mic it's right over here you can see it hopefully the camera is in focus now the thing with this microphone is it's omnidirectional so it's gonna pick up everything not just you but everything and the good thing about that is that it makes your voice sound as natural as possible as in it's proper it's just the way it's meant to be and this other microphone which I use normally uh, most of the time um, is a cardioid microphone and this is a lapel mic um, and this doesn't make it sound natural because it's really cardioid it has a limited frequency uh, response and um, in and the reason I use this is is because it does noise cancelling it doesn't pick up all the ambience and everything so it's much better for the kind of area that I'm in even though it's inside is quite noisy apparently um, so this is what this microphone sounds like uh, and you can get this for about 20 pound so that is really really good I highly recommend you looking at this microphone I'll probably leave a link in the description so you can go check it out but now I'm gonna plug the other one in which is the I'll talk about that one <coughs> okay so this is the a professional kind of audio from the XY capsule this is what you should kind of get if you move in closer and lower the gain also about the gain we'll get on to in a bit <coughs> okay testing 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 whoa that is messed up bro all right 
So um, this is the giant squid. Oh crap! Um, this is the giant squid audio cardioid microphone, and this is a mono microphone. Now basically, this is a, a cardioid microphone, as in it picks up uh, just the way it's pointing. Now the gain is on ten. Okay, the gain is on ten now, and that's because the difference between the uh, omnidirectional microphone and this microphone is that this is not sensitive, and I don't know if you're picking up those clicks or anything. Um, and this microphone is sensitive, so what that means is you're gonna have to crank the gain a lot higher, and you can hear all the noise on this recorder's preamps. Um, now I, I did watch a lot of reviews on this microphone um, on, on YouTube but what I found is that um, it's not sensitive, it has a, a pressure level of minus 54 decibels which is really really quiet uh, whereas this mic is J044 has a minus 32 which is the standard about for all the lapel mics and this is just not um, sensitive enough so that's the reason why I have to crank the gain all the way up to 10 so I can talk and this is the same thing with the Zoom H2n what you were listening to throughout this whole video when it be when the video began was on this microphone it was just heavily edited so you can get rid of the preamp noise um, but what I'm gonna do is unplug this and decrease the gain and now I heard this funny talk about which kind of makes a lot of sense if you plug in an XLR microphone while the recorder is turned on it can fry it can't it I'm not sure but it is balanced so I don't know what I'm gonna do is get the condenser microphone in and I'm gonna plug it into the XLR input where I'm recording on it so uh, I guess I should stop recording just in case but I wanna see what happens I'm an idiot I know gonna switch on to the condenser microphone that's it pointing right up here and you can see the wire coming down you can obviously write right that around and what you're listening to now is the condenser microphone and this is still running on the batteries it exactly doesn't seem to be dying out on me it's only recorded nine minutes or so already um, I'm not sure but here's the thing so you're listening to me through the samsung co2 condenser microphone which costs about 50 quid and 59 and it's basically an xlr microphone small diaphragm condenser microphone and it uses 48 volts of phantom power and the gain is on six now that's just out over here out of the shot now if you can hear the noise of the preamps it, um, it is just slightly quiet it's just mm, dancing about a minus 18 if I talk a bit louder it's just about minus 12 just in the middle so I'll crank the gain up from 6 to 7 and this is perfectly fine I'd say this is where it kind of should be or 6.5 now the problem is <coughs> there is a lot of noise in the preamps and so what we're gonna do is using this microphone we'll talk about all the other good stuff because if I move this microphone closer to my mouth, uh, it is a bit roomy as well since it is a cardioid microphone. Um, it is obviously further away from my mouth. But it all has to do with the preamps of the Zoom H5. The battery is going down to uh, two levels now. Um, so let's talk about, um, we'll just move it closer. This is how it basically sounds like. Again, uh, 6.8 and it's just out of this shot. So I'm just gonna move in closer. So here it is. <coughs> okay, so testing, testing. This is quite loud. Okay, so I'm um, dropped it down to gain five point three or something like that and um, this is much better because the noise uh, on the cuts here all right i hate this camera um 
So, um, since it's much closer to my mouth, it is basically just a lot better because I had to drop down the gain, which means much better for um, recording vocals and whatnot. So, the first thing is when you are monitoring, hang on, you can turn the mic capsule down now, right? Oh, I get it now. It's, um, <laughs> oh, that is much better. I was actually monitoring and I did have the capsule on, but it's much better. So, uh, when you're recording like this, um, you'll find that the if you're monitoring the audio the levels as you can see here if I speak up um, They are a bit delayed. So I'm kind of trying to show that but the it has a bit of a delay on the audio monitoring and That's a bit annoying now not to me obviously once you just do a test on it You can just put it away forget about it but I'm just saying that it has a bit of a delay. So if you're monitoring the audio from any microphone that you're using, um, it's obviously going to show you with a bit of a delay. It's going to come later on. Now, there is another recorder I'm going to talk about, but that's later on. The XLR recordings are in mono. So if you're recording with an XLR microphone like this, it's going to be in mono. And you can join it up to as a stereo file, but then you can only use one microphone. Um, so that's that. And let's talk about the battery life. Uh, now on the Zoom H5 <coughs> website it says about about 10 or 15 hours of continuous recording time. Um, that is not true. Well, it kind of is in a way. If you're gonna just use the built-in mic capsules or external lavalier microphones and stuff, that's fine. It'll give you about eight hours or so on two fully charged AA batteries. Um, but as soon as you plug in an XLR microphone like the one I'm using now that uses phantom power, it's gonna drop all the way down to about two or three hours. I'm not joking. Maybe even less than that, I'm not sure. <coughs> it also does depend on the battery that you're using. Now, I'm using um, USB cell, which is a lot different than your normal batteries. Um, so the difference is um, the alkaline batteries are much bigger and they also have a higher voltage at 1.5 so if, if you're using two batteries that's going to be a total of three volts uh, and with the um, the rechargeable batteries which uh, which are uh, nimh they are actually 1.2 volts so they're just lower so or uh, if you're using two batteries that's 2.4 volts but also the the capacity is lower, so in this case, I'm only using a 1200 milliamps battery. Um, so two of those are just about 2400 milliamps, which isn't that good. Um, so that's going to have obviously shorter battery life. But the thing is, you can use a USB in, and that is going to use as a bus power, and you can just record that way. That basically means unlimited power record for as long as you want. But the problem with that is, you're going to have to carry around a battery power bank or something. Um, so there's that but the good thing is unlimited battery life It's just one thing I want to clear out that if you're going to use phantom power don't expect it to last very long And there's a field recorder, so it's kind of a bit disappointing if, if I'm honest with you from my personal opinion I think it's a bit disappointing now. Let's talk about the preamp noise now a lot of people say that these preamps are really really good, but I Have a bit of a different opinion is not and I've been looking at forums and Almost everybody is talking about these preamps. Um, when I first got this, I was uh, really happy that I got a new recorder. But the bad thing is, first thing that I realized when I was monitoring the audio was the preamp noise. Now, here's the thing. Um, because I have OCD and a bit of other things like anxiety, I get really nervous and stuff. Um, and really start to panic when some things feel out of order. And what I found funny is everybody was saying the preamps are really good, they're really quiet. Right now, yes, they are right quiet. I can drop it down to gain five. Um, and it's almost silent with the preamps. Almost, but you can still hear the noise. But I'm a bit of a quiet guy, so I'm gonna keep it up on gain 5.5. 5. Now the thing is, this is right up close to my mouth. And it's just jumping about uh, minus 12 and stuff which is perfect that's where you want it and that's where it is but if you're going to use this microphone further away like i was doing a bit earlier ago um there's going to be a lot of preamp noise so here's uh so here's what i'm talking about so i'm gonna increase the gain from gain five to six now the noise level doubled 
Now I'm going to increase it to 7. Now the noise level has doubled again. Now I'm going to increase it all the way up to 10. Okay, so let me talk about what's going on. From gain 0 to all the way up to 5.5, a is pretty quiet, A is stable and really quiet. But as soon as you go from gain 6 up, it all of a sudden becomes noisy, really, really, really noisy. And you can hear a lot of background stuff. So that's got me a bit bothered because it's not consistent. The noise level from 0 to 5 is like this, and then all of a sudden from 5 to 6 is a bit like this. And then it goes all the way up. Um, so the, so to counter that, I've ordered a fathead, yeah, a fathead phantom, and that's coming in, and I'll do a review on that, and that basically gives you a good clean boost, and so you want to use a higher gain, like I'm using right now, which means cleaner audio. The battery level has dropped to one, and I actually want to plug in the USB bus power now. So that's just with one microphone and also the capsule engaged, which I'm guessing you're probably going to get the XLR capsule um, to use for microphones with. It's dropped down to one already and that's only in, I don't know how much long it's been recorded, but it's because it shows me the time left. Um, but it's been recording for 20 minutes and that's why it's dropped to. So what I'm going to do is plug in the DC. And the battery icon is going to disappear now. When you do connect it with your PC, if you press the menu button, which means go back, it is actually going to turn into bus powered mode, which basically means it's running off of the USB. So unlimited battery out of your PC or laptop where you're using. This is what I'm using right now. It's coming out of the laptop where it's on a USB powered hub. So it's basically just coming up from the wall. Um, but this means unlimited battery, so I can talk for as long as you want or until that is the when the um, timer runs out um, or the space in the memory card. So let's talk about um, the fed. I've ordered it, I'll talk about it later on, but basically it gives you a cleaner boost so you don't have to use high gain and that means a cleaner signal. So when it comes in, I'll talk about that. Now first off, the, f the way it manages files, now it is absolutely disastrous. So first off you have the folder menu when you go onto the memory card it says uh, i think it says stereo um it says zoom uh, it says the recording the dcim kind of folder you go into that and there's basically like 10 folders which say folder one folder two folder three folder four folder five six seven eight nine and then ten and in each of those folders there's another number of recordings that you've done each separated into their own folders Ah, it's a bit confusing. So basically, I'll talk about this recording. So it's being recorded into <coughs> folder 01 out of the 10 folders. And in the folder 1, this is the 8th folder. And in this 8th folder that I'm recording, you will find two tracks. One for the XLR, one for this microphone. Because I'm recording in those two. So that's what you're going to find in that folder. Now... I've grown a bit used to it, but it still is annoying as hell. Um, but, and on top of that, I don't really know what they would have done to counter it. Actually, I do. They just put a new file name and just increase the number, like the Zoom H2 vendors. But this one doesn't do that. It makes a new folder. And in that folder, it's going to put the three tracks or four tracks that you're going to be recording. But it is a bit annoying to use. Uh, I get confused all the time. Is it the folder or is it the folder inside the other folder? Um, it is a bit annoying, um, but it's just somewhat to complain about. Honestly, I'm going to complain about a lot of things. Let's talk about the last thing, which is a bit more of a funny thing. So, uh, when I bought this, <coughs> uh, for a really similar price, you can get the Tascam DR10 Mark III or Mark II. Now, basically, the difference between these two recorders is they are similar in terms of the preamp noise. And at that point, when I... I've, I've seen the DR60 and the DR70 reviews and what I realized is that hey, there's a lot of noise in the preamps. But the DR10 Mark II, or Mark II that is, and Mark III is a bit of an improvement. Um, the noise is not as much as the 
uh, it is kind of similar to the Zoom H5. The only difference is um, as you increase the gain, it doesn't all of a sudden jump up. It kind of goes up slightly. So again, 10, uh, you'll hit it almost as bad as the Zoom H5, but it's going to be much quieter than the Zoom H5. And it is a bit more pricey, just a bit more. 300 pounds, I think that's what it is. Um, and this is 206 on a discount. Basically, it's about um, two. This recorder is 275, which is the retail price on Amazon, is for 206 on a discount. And so that recorder uh, kind of made me feel a bit bad because the way it set out the all these buttons and everything it has is really really looks like something out of uh, a professional movie set like you would use that on a movie set but you wouldn't because you got bad equipment um, but what i'm saying is uh it just um the noise is a bit better it's a similar preamp so they might be using the same ones but zoom recorders are known to have a lot of noise in their recordings and um, I realized that after this one because that's similar except it doesn't all of a sudden jump up in noise uh, whereas this one does and also what kind of attracted me to that recorder after I bought this one now I'm not gonna buy that one because I don't have any money and I don't need it so I'm not gonna go that, get that but what I found that attracted me to it was the PCM recording bitrate I mean the sample rate, the sample frequency and stuff. Um, this goes up to 96 kilohertz. Now that goes up to 192 kilohertz. Now that is overkill, complete overkill. And I, I'm not sure who's gonna use that. Uh, and I personally don't really need that. That's the thing. I don't really need that. But I have this tendency to buy things um, just to future-proof myself. What if I need in the future that kind of frequency? Not well, then you're gonna need it, but what if i want to rip my vinyl records into digital files so i can have better sound quality compared to a cd on my music player on my phone 192 kilohertz is really good because you know vinyl comes straight from analog something like that um so that is uh, compelling and also the amount of features that you have all these bones and everything and it also has like a double battery thing so if one battery is running out you can take one out and replace it while the other one's in use or you get a, a thing is uh, and also you get a longer recording time and this thing's battery dies in like 20 minutes well i'm using really uh, really small batteries as well but i mean you get the whole point i'm not saying that that's a better recorder but just go ahead and check it out um you can't change the mic capsule on it because it's all just built-in stuff the Tascam is um I thought that the Zoom H5 had better preamps, or the Zoom H6 had better preamps than the Tascam DR60, or I think it was DR70 Mark II, because when I looked at the comparisons, there was a lot more noise. There was, it was just more apparent in the DR70 uh, mic recordings. Um, so I opted for this, and then when I found out that the DR100 Mark III is better than this, is better just spec wise um i'm not saying that somebody's gonna use 192 kilohertz for vocals no they're not um 48 kilohertz, uh, kilohertz is um pretty much where i stick out um honestly i'm not saying that this is this is a really nice recorder i really really do like it uh, i'm just waiting for the fat head to come in so i can get an even better recording um and that means um i don't have to edit anymore because i just get rid of the noise that's it and that's all i do i just normalize it a bit get rid of the noise and that's it but if i'm not gonna have any noise or just not enough that it seems apparent to remove then there is no reason for me to do any editing that will help a lot and this coming in gonna use it with this microphone and i haven't reviewed this microphone as well uh, i'll review it when the time comes i'm just waiting for that so i can get a proper signal of the microphone because the um preamp noise is actually getting in the way if you're looking for an all-in-one recorder that you want to use for everything this is not it you get the zoom h2n basically uh, and i say that because it, ha it has a surround sound a, a four channel surround and it has um, all the different microphones that you look for built into it so you've got the xy microphone surround around xy and also the mid-side microphone which also can act a bit like a shotgun microphone 
uh, and all of these are on this recorder but they co cap the, they're separate the capsules are separate whereas that is not only cheaper and they all built into it so there's our and it's also recording it records on 96 kilohertz 24 bit uh, so yeah, go ahead and check the, out the Zoom H2N. Otherwise, this is a phenomenal recorder. Um, I'll leave the video here. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or anything I missed out, let me know in the comment section below. Goodbye. I'll see you again in another video.